Hey, before you sign on to be a Christian, you need to think about a few things. You see, a call to be a Christian is a call to be different. I mean, not just a little bit different, not, not just a little bit. It is an absolute life-changing experience. If you're saying, I want to be a Christian, then you're saying, I want to walk away from the morals of this world and I want to walk in holiness with God. It is that spirit of repentance that happens. Somebody says, well, you do you have to repent to be saved? Or do you, do you repent before you get saved or, or after you get saved? Listen to me, listen to me. The minute you look at your life and you look at the world and you say, I don't want to live like this world no more. I want to live in holiness with God. And then you turn to God and you say, I'm walking away. I want to follow you. In that moment when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that is an experience of repentance because you have rejected the way of the world. You have rejected the way of your own sinful life. And you've said, I don't want to be this no more. I want to live for Jesus Christ. And so that repentance happens all at once. If, it, if the repentance don't happen, then you never made any decision. But if you make the decision, I'm following God, that is a spirit of repentance that says, from this day forward, I'm living for Jesus Christ. And Jesus comes into your life and he saves your soul. But here's the thing. If you think you want to get saved, but you ain't willing to change, forget it. You're not going to get saved. If you're not willing to walk away from the uh, horrible morals of this world, if you're not willing to, to bring your passions under the authority of Jesus Christ, if you're not willing to repent and turn to God, you're not getting saved. You're just signing up for church membership. And even if you go in and get baptized, you could be baptized so many times the tadpoles know your social security number, but that don't make you saved. When you're saved is whenever you find out I am lost without God. My life is of no uh, moral value. I've got to change. And you turn to him and you say, my God, I pray you'll forgive me of my sins. And, and, and I pray that you'll help me to turn to you. I pray that you'll take over my life from this day forward. I'm following you. Uh, you know, I don't know what exact words you'll use, but it's like that. For me, I was just driving down the road, heading to church to get saved. I was 20 years old. I raised my hand. I, I'd had it. And I raised my hand and I said, God, I've lived for the devil long enough. Now it's time to live for Jesus Christ. And I meant it with every ounce in me. And Jesus saved my soul as I was driving down the road. But here's the point. It wasn't nothing I did. What did I have to bring to the altar? a sinful, a, a rebellious human being whose morals were trash. And I came to the altar of grace and the almighty God looked down upon me and with his, his unspeakable love, he saved my soul. And that is an experience that happened where I couldn't get up off my knees and go back out in the world and continue to live like the world. How is that possible? No, when you get saved, there becomes uh, within you this, this power of God. He's the Holy Spirit. And He's in you and He directs you and He, he convicts you. He, he, he shows you. He, he teaches you. He gives you wisdom and knowledge. And He shows you how to live. And so if you're going to be a Christian, don't fall into the trap of all those out there who say they're Christians, but they've never changed. You know the people. They cuss just like everybody else cusses. They're getting drunk just like everybody else is getting drunk. They're doing all kinds of other things I don't really want to talk about right now. They're living an ungodly life on the job, out in the field, wherever y'all at. But then they're going to be in church on Sunday, but they ain't no different. They ain't Christians. They ain't, you don't tell me they're Christians. If you can't turn from your sin and turn to God, if you can enjoy your sin, you, you ain't saved. But I tell you, when you get saved, you will sin, but you won't enjoy it. It'll tear you up and you'll fall under conviction because the Spirit of God lives in you and you realize I have sinned against my, my God and I'm wrong. God, help me to repent. And when you repent, that's, that's that repentance that brings you back into fellowship so when you sin as a Christian, you don't lose your salvation. When you sin as a Christian, you lose your fellowship with God. Here's what I mean. So if, if I commit sin, and then I try to go back and talk to God, he's like, no, I ain't listening to you two. We get this straight. Not those words, but you just know. I mean, like, you're under conviction. And you just know, I can't talk to God until I come talk to God about what God wants me to talk to him about. And what is that? My sin? It's right there in front of me, and I can't talk to God. So what do I do? I said, my God, I have sinned against you. 
I have been wrong. And I, I repent. I pray you forgive me. You know what he does? He forgives me. And then says, what can I do for you? And I can just pray then. It just clears it up just like that. To a lost world, to, to ungodly people that might be listening to this video, you're thinking, what? That's crazy. Of course it's crazy. You can't understand it because the spirit lives in you is of the devil. And the devil, he leads you into passions of the world. And you think that's the way it should be. But a Christian, you know the ways of the world are wrong. And you know you should not be entangling yourself with the ways of the world. Sure, you're going to work with people who are lost. Absolutely, you can't get away from that. You're sure you'll go to school with people who are lost. You can't get away with that unless maybe you start homeschooling. But you, you, you can't get away. But what do you do? You walk in an ungodly world as different. As one who is owned by somebody other than who they're owned by. We are followers of Christ, not the followers of the world. And when you decide, I'm, I'm going to sign on to be a Christian, when you decide, I'm going to live for Jesus Christ, you're saying that I know that my new life is going to stand out like crazy, and I know I'm going to have critics all around me, people who will laugh at me, scoff at me, ostracize me. Some may even go to physical to fight against me, to hurt me. But you've got to decide. My faith in Jesus Christ is more important than anything else in this whole wide world. Uh, following Jesus Christ is more important than anybody or anything else on this earth. But whenever you decide I'm signing on with Jesus Christ, you decide it's now, it's forever, and I ain't changing my mind. I'm going to follow Jesus. Let me give you a few quick tips before we close. Number one, you give your life to Jesus Christ simply by faith. You accept him as your Lord and Savior. And it is an acceptance that's more than a weekend long. It is an acceptance to where you say from this day forward for the rest of my life, you are my Lord and I'm following you as your servant. I am going to live for you, Jesus. That's how a person gets saved. But once you get saved, you need to go get baptized. When you go get baptized, that's you're, you're, you're standing there saying to the world as you stand up in the water, you're saying, I died with Christ, I'm buried with Christ, and I rise to walk a new life in Jesus Christ. You're demonstrating the gospel, death, burial, and resurrection. And then after you're baptized, you need to really get into the Bible and start reading. Oh, my, I don't, I don't like to read. Don't tell me. Man, I couldn't hardly read at all, but that's how I learned to read at 20 years old. But when I, God called me to read the Bible, I said, I told you that you're the Lord of my life and whatever you call me to do, I'm going to do it. I'm going to read this book as good as I can. And so I just sat out and started reading the best I could. And most of it I couldn't understand. But boy, the things I, the things I did understand, my, it just fed my spirit. It just fed my salvation. It fed my transformation. And I was changed. And it's never let up. I still love God's Word, and I still study the Word, and God still feeds me through it. So I want to encourage you, read the Bible. And then another thing, I want to encourage you, and you listen very closely, because this, this point's really very, very important. Find, mark my words now, find a very good Bible-believing church where the preacher stands up, he opens his Bible, and he preaches from the Bible. And I'm not, I'm not encouraging you to go to some place that has church on their building. This, I don't care what denomination, but it has the name of the church. And, and, and you go in there, and he's just spitting out philosophy, just talking, but he's not really bringing the word from the Bible, sharing it, and then making the sense of it. Like I did just a minute ago. Come out from among them. Be ye separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. And then I expounded on it and I made the sense of what it teaches. And so I want to encourage you, make sure you find a preacher who loves Jesus, who loves the Word of God, who loves you. You see, here's the reason I say that. Because the bar of getting in as a preacher somewhere is so low. And there's a whole lot of shysters out there that are not really preachers. And they're able to get in and become this, this person of uh, influence over communities. And I'm telling you, you be very careful about those fake preachers. Because Satan has sowed them so thickly among the churches. 
you find a good, solid, Bible-believing church with a pastor who loves God. He loves God more than he loves his own fame. He loves God more than he loves the paycheck. He's not all about the money. He's all about the mission. And you get in that church and you serve that church. And if you start going to a church and you figure out this church is not really honoring God, get out of that church. You know how you'll know? You know how you'll know when you're in a church that don't honor God? When you're reading your Bible. If you're reading your Bible, you'll know what is right and what is wrong. See, that's what the Bible does for us. The Bible is the inspired Word of God. God breathed. He gave us the Word of God. And it's given to us... <clears throat> that it might teach us what is right and what is wrong, how to get right and how to stay right. And so when you study the Bible, you're learning all this. Then you go to a church and you're listening to this guy preach and it ain't matching up with what your Bible teaches. Get out of there and find you another good church, no matter how much you like the people. You're there to learn and to grow in Christ. You're there to, to be a part of the expansion of the kingdom of God. And if that preacher ain't preaching the word of God, you find another place to go. They can use you at another church down the road somewhere. And I just want to encourage you, the things that I've told you here today, they're important. Your soul depends on it. Because there's coming a day when Jesus is coming back. And it's just as sure as the sun came up this morning. Jesus Christ is coming to get us one of these days. And when he comes... We're going to stand before the Almighty God. And we are going to give an account for what we did with the revelation that he's given to us. If you want to be different, if you want to be a Christian, be real. Don't be a fake. Don't be in it to be seen. Don't be in it to be a part of that community. You be in it because you're tired of living this ungodly lifestyle and you want to walk with God. You want to walk in holiness with him. Come on, y'all. Let's follow Jesus.